Um, okay, let's start. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ye Dong Liu. Uh, I am an open source engineer from Huawei, and my topic today is um, using Volcano and Kubernetes for cutting edge AI deployment. Um, this PPT is authored by both uh, me and William Wang, and uh, I will be the main speaker today. So, um, hope you enjoy. All right, uh, just a brief introduction of me and William. Uh, I am an open source engineer at Huawei and worked in multiple open source communities, including Onyx, Volcano, and Mindspore. And William, he is an architect at Huawei, and he is a Volcano community team lead, experienced in batch system, um, big data, AI workload performance acceleration. So, um, I divided my presentation into four parts. Uh, the first one is brief introduction of MySpore, and uh, which is a uh, uh, MySpore is a newly uh, open source deep learning uh, framework. And the second part is key features of MySpore. The third part is cloud native and Volcano. Volcano is a batch system of CNCF, uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And the last part is uh, around a simple uh, demo, uh, uh, MySpore GPU running on Volcano. OK. Um, although the concept of artificial intelligence has been around for um, many decades, it wasn't until the 2010 that um, AI deployment went really explosive. We saw AlphaGo beat the top human player, uh, we saw uh, image classification, NLP prediction, and many more applications outscored humans. And the backbone of all these applications is a deep learning framework. Uh, so deep learning framework offers um, building blocks for uh, designing, training, and validating deep neural networks uh, through a high-level programming interface uh, like Python APIs. And some widely used uh, deep learning frameworks uh, uh, include TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, and so on. So right now we have a newcomer, uh, MindSpore, and I will introduce MindSpore to all of you. So, uh, MySpore is a newly open source deep learning uh, training or inferencing uh, framework that could be used for mobile, edge, and cloud scenarios. So, MySpore is designed to provide development experience with friendly design and efficient execution for the data scientists and algorithm engineers, and provide native support for Ascend AI processor, which is a Huawei own made uh, processor for. Uh, AI uh, computing and some uh, software hardware code optimization. At the meantime, uh, MySpore as a global open uh, global AI open source community aims to um, further advance the development and enrichment of the AI software hardware applications ecosystem. So on the left, you can see our uh, official uh, website and the QR code. On the, on the right, we can see the uh, code hosting platform. We host our, our code on Gitty gitty.com, uh, which is a Chinese version of GitHub. And we also put our code on a source code on GitHub, uh, github.com slash mysport dash AI slash mysport. And you can find our source code here. All right. So uh, mysport was open sourced on uh, March the 28th, 2020. So it has been around seven months, and the overall development of MySpore is rapid. Um, we have about 3,000 stars and 5,000 commits. The website visitors are over 3 million. Uh, MySpore uh, Model Zoo now includes over 20 models, and we have over 150 applications. So you can check the user map in the bot uh, on the bottom left. See, our users are from uh, Asia, from Oceania, Europe, North America, and not South America, pretty much all over the world. All right. We collaborate with both academic and industrial partners to build a global open source community for a prosperous uh, AI software and hardware ecosystem. Uh, this screenshot includes some of our partners. All right. 
let's talk about something about the um, MySport governance. So uh, MySport community adopts um, open governance model. We have uh, 14 members from various universities, institutions, and the companies that forms an open and global technical governing body. So talking about governance body, we have a three layer um, governing body that is steering committee or TSC, um, special interest group or SIG, and the working group or WG. Uh, steering committee defines the vision, the goals, and the governance process of the community. Steering committee is elected, and the special interest groups or SIGs are persistent groups that are responsible for specific parts of the project, including um, front end, compiler, executor and also ongoing maintenance of the code in their areas. Uh, SIGs are char chartered by the uh, steering committee. And working groups, WGs, are temporary groups formed to address issues that cross uh, SIG boundaries. Uh, working groups do not own any code ownership or other long-term uh, artifacts. Uh, working groups are chartered by the steering committee. All right, let's talk about the Ascent uh, SOCs or chipsets. So uh, the Ascent 310 and Ascent 910 are two chipsets that uh, designed and uh, produced by Huawei. The Ascent 1910 uh, is a high integration SOC processor. In addition to the uh, DaVinci AI cores, it integrates uh, it inter uh, integrates uh, CPUs, DVPPs, and uh, task scheduler. So Ascent 910 is mainly used for um, training. Uh, this AI processor uh, delivers 256 TFLOPs at FP16 and 212 uh, TOPs and uh, uh, integer 8 of computing performance with just uh, 310 watts of ma uh, maximum power consumption. So um, Ascend 310 is a, a smaller chip uh, comparing to Ascend 910, which is mainly used for inferencing. And uh, Ascend 310 is uh, this AI processor delivers um, 16 T uh, ops at integer 8 and 8 T flops at uh, FP16 with just 8 watts of uh, power consumption. Uh, Ascend 310 integrates Huawei's own DaVinci architecture with abundant uh, computing units extending AI chip applications. Well, uh, productive-wise, um, the Atlas series uh, servers are equipped with uh, Ascend processors, as you can see, some equipped with Ascend 310, some uh, equipped with Ascend 910. So the Atlas ranges from uh, cloud cluster server to edge stations to edge servers and the AI accelerators to covering all scenarios. All right, uh, that is a introduction of MySpore. And now the second part is um, key features. Uh, I will introduce some key features of MySpore. All right, uh, the MySport framework consists of um, front-end expression layer, the graph engine layer, the um, back-end runtime layer. Um, so the uh, MySport uh, front-end expression layer, the, this layer uh, contains Python APIs, uh, the MySport Intermediate Data Representation, or MySport IRs, and the Graph High-Level Optimization, or GHLOs. So the Python APIs provides user with uh, a unified APIs for uh, model training, um, inferencing, and export, and uh, uh, unified APIs for data processing and uh, format transformation. The GHLO, or um, Graph High-Level Optimization, includes optimization irrelevant to hardware, such as um, dead code eliminations, sorry, uh, auto-parallel and uh, auto-differentiation. And the MySport IR provides uh, unified uh, intermediate data representations um, based on which uh, MySport performs pass optimization. Uh, MySport graph engine layer. Um, 
This layer uh, contains graph uh, low-level optimization, or GLLOs, and the graph execution. The GLLO includes uh, hardware-related optimization and in-depth optimization related to the combination of hardware and software, such as operator fusion and the buffer fusion. And the graph execution provides uh, communications APIs required for offline uh, graph execution and distributed training. And the last part is uh, my uh, backend runtime layer. So this layer contains the efficient running environments on the cloud, on edge, and the devices. All right. All right. Okay, it's covered. Uh, so the title is uh, "Mind Expression from Source Code to MSIR." Um, so as we mentioned, uh, the overall architecture of MySpore consists of uh, Mind Expression or ME uh, Graph Engine or GE and Backend Runtime. So ME provides um, user-level APIs for scientific computing, uh, building and training neural networks, and converting Python code for, of users into graphs. GE is a manager of operators and hardware resources, and is responsible for controlling execution of graphs received from ME. Um, backend runtime includes efficient running environments such as the CPU, GPU, Ascend AI processors, and uh, even Android or iOS on the cloud edge and devices. So an uh, intermediate um, representation, or IR, is a representation of program between the source and target languages, um, which facilitates uh, program analysis and optimization for the compiler. Um, therefore, the IR design needs to consider the difficulty in converting the uh, source language to the target language, as well as the ease of use and performance of program analysis and optimization. So, um, MySpore IR or uh, MSIR is an uh, improved IR based on ANF. The MySpore IR or uh, Mind IR is a, a function style IR based on graph representation. Um, its core purpose is to serve automatic differentiation transformation. Uh, automatic differentiation uses a transformation method based on the function style programming framework. Therefore, IR uses a semantic close to that of the ANF function. So MSIR is a concise, efficient, and flexible graph-based functional IR. It can represent free variables, high-order functions, and recursive functions. Optimization and auto-differentiation is executed based on MSIR. Okay, let's talk about something about uh, parallelism. So we, there are two ways of parallelism in uh, MySport, uh, data parallel and model parallel. So for data parallel, the data set is partitioned and each worker receives Different data set with the same shared, uh, with, with the same share, shared model. On the contrary, a model parallel uh, partitions the model. Each worker receives the same data set, uh, but with different models. So for uh, data parallel, the forward propagation is independent of each other, and each uh, backward propagation only needs to be synchronized once. But for data parallel, uh, each working nodes needs to save all the parameters. Um, for, so for uh, model parallel, uh, the good part is parameters can be distributed to multiple working nodes. But the bad part is uh, backward propagation needs to be synchronized in each layer. And each um, uh, mini batch data needs to be copied to all the nodes. Well, uh, as a key feature of MySpot, we provide uh, automatic parallelism. Automatic parallelism is used to implement um, something like hybrid uh, parallel training that combines the uh, automatic parallelism uh, for, of data parallel and model parallel. It aims to help users express the parallel algorithm logic using standalone scripts, reduce the difficulty of distributed training, improve the algorithm R&D efficiency, and maintain high level uh, performance of training. So as shown in this graph, the automatic parallel process traverses the um, standalone forward uh, ANF graphs and performs shard modeling on tensors in the unit of distributed operator, indicating how the input and output tensor of an operator are distributed to each device of the cluster. 
That is, the tensor layout uh, users do not need to know which device runs uh, which slice of a model. The framework automatically uh, schedules and allocates the model slices. To obtain the tensor layout model, each operator has a shard strategy, which indicates the shard status of each input of the operator in the corresponding dimension. Generally, the tensor can be sharded in any dimension as long as the value is a multiply of 2, is a multiple of 2, and uh, the even distribution principle is met. So, based on the shard strategy of an operator, the framework automatically derives the distribution model of input tensors and output tensors of the operator. So based on the tensor layout model, the distributed operator determines whether to insert extra computation and communication operations in the graph to ensure that the operator compute uh, computing logic is correct. So when the output tensor model of an operator is inconsistent with the input tensor model of the next operator, communications and the computations operations needs to be introduced to implement the change between the tensor layers. So the automatic uh, parallel process introduces the tensor redistribution algorithm which can be used to derive the communication uh, conversion operations between random tensor layouts. So in general, um, this distributed representation breaks the boundary between um, data parallelism and model parallelism, making it easy to implement hybrid parallelism. Uh, for the perspective of the scripts, the users only need to construct a standalone uh, network to express the parallel um, algorithm logic framework automatically sh shards the entire graph. All right. So this is an example code of uh, auto parallel. So we can see we init and construct a simple uh, dense net. And in our train steps, the first part is uh, context set. So in this uh, one line of code, we just set the uh, parallel mode to uh, auto parallel. Then the rest just leave the rest things to the system. And we talk about something about the MySpore graph mode and penitive mode. So currently, there are two execution modes of uh, mainstream deep learning frameworks, uh, static graph mode and the dynamic graph mode. The static graph mode has a relatively high training performance, but is difficult to debug. On the contrary, the dynamic graph mode is easy to debug, but is difficult to execute efficiently. So MySpore provides an encoding mode that unifies dynamic and the static graphs, which greatly improves the compatibility between static and the dynamic graphs. Instead of developing multiple sets of code, user can switch between the two modes by changing only one line of code. So just um, similar to the uh, parallelism, so we simply uh, set the uh, context set, context mode, mode equals uh, context dot uh, graph mode or penitive mode to set your mode. All right, the last key feature I want to talk about is Mind Insight, uh, which is uh, all about visualization. So Mind Insight is a visualized debugging and the tuning components of MindSpore. Uh, Mind Insights can be used to complete tasks such as uh, training visualization, performance tuning, and uh, precisioning tuning. So training visualization includes functions such as um, training dashboard, uh, model lineage, and uh, data lineage. Uh, training dashboard includes functions such as Scala, uh, parameter distribution, computational graph, data graph, and data sampling. So, okay, here is a screenshot of the Mind Insight component. All right, uh, that's all about the key features of MySpore. And in the next part, I want to talk about uh, uh, something about Cloud Native and uh, Volcano. So, um, Volcano is a Kubernetes native batch system. Um, so, uh, a, Kubernet uh, a Kubernetes uh, native system for high performance workloads. So Volcano is a system for running high performance workloads on Kubernetes. Um, it features um, 
powerful batch scheduling capabilities uh, that Kubernetes cannot provide, but is commonly required by many classes of high-performance workloads, including um, machine learning or deep learning, including big data and other applications. So these type of applications typically run on generalized domain frameworks like TensorFlow, Spark, PyTorch, and MPI. So Volcano is integrated with these frameworks to allow you to run your applications without adapting efforts while enjoying remarkable batch scheduling. So these are the websites and GitHub and Twitter and Stack channels of Volcano. All right. So Volcano is a combination of CRDs, controllers, and schedulers. It is an also an open source community uh, supports most computing uh, engines like Spark, uh, Flink, TensorFlow, MPI, and MindSpore. Uh, it is also an active community uh, like uh, many uh, contributors. It, is, uh, it has advanced scheduling policies, support queue for multi-tenant scenarios, support a fair share uh, for job, for queue for tenant, for better SLA, provide um, advanced policy for AI and big data scenarios. So uh, it integrates uh, management, uh, manage hybrid workloads, and can also manage heterogeneous resources like CPU, uh, GPU, and MPUs. So job scheduling and management becomes um, pretty complex and critical for uh, high performance batch computing commonly requires uh, support for diverse uh, scheduling algorithms, more efficient uh, scheduling, uh, non-intrusive uh, support for mainstream computing frameworks, su uh, support for uh, multi-architecture uh, computing. So uh, in um, uh, uh, Kubernetes, the uh, kubectl creates a job x uh, objects in API server if all admission passed. Then the job x controller create paths based on its uh, replicas and temperatures. And uh, uh, right now this policy in uh, VS scheduler is pluggable, uh, like in DRF, uh, in priority in gun scheduling. And Volcano handles all the uh, high performance workloads. So include, uh, Volcano uh, has some features like um, uh, rich scheduling policies, uh, supports a variety of scheduling policies like uh, gun scheduling, uh, fair share scheduling, uh, queue scheduling, preemption scheduling, uh, topology-based scheduling, uh, reclaim, uh, backfile, uh, resource uh, reservation. Uh, it can also enhance job management. You can use enhanced job features of Volcano for high-performance computing. Uh, it can also support uh, multi-port jobs, improved error handling, and uh, indexed jobs, and uh, multi-architect computing. Volcano can schedule uh, computing resources from multiple architectures like x86, ARM, and Quimpon, and uh, Ascend, and GPUs. All right, the last part is I uh, running a simple demo, uh, uh, running a simple uh, MySport GPU demo on Volcanoes. So um, this is how Volcano work in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, what, we, what we want to do is to run a simple MySport GPU job to validate the GPU communication capabilities. So on the left, uh, we can see the uh, Kubernetes control plane. The Kube API server will initialize the Volcano CRD and store it into the ETCD. Uh, on the right, we have the cloud service container environment. The Volcano controller controls all its components uh, life, uh, life cycle. So in this case, we launch uh, one MPI master or uh, MPI master zero and the two MPI workers or uh, MPI worker zero and MPI worker one. So the MPI masters uh, simply send all the task information to uh, the MPI workers and collect or gather all the uh, results from the MPI workers. The two MPI workers are the ones uh, who really do the work. Uh, they communicate through NCCL to each other. All 
right, uh, this is a YAML file we use to launch the job. Uh, as you can see, in this task, we launch two kinds of replicas, uh, one MPI master and two MPI workers. The image we use in this example is a modified um, MySport version two, uh, version 0 0.2 GPU image, uh, which I uploaded to my personal uh, Docker Hub account. So in MPI master, we run sshd and then execute the MPI command. The prefix tells the workers to find the path of MPI in this image. So the Python script we use is uh, also very simple. I copy paste this file from uh, MySport official website. The output of this file is a three by three by four dimensional array. Um, so uh, this is run on one uh, GPU. So uh, to validate the MySport GPU uh, communication capabilities, so we do some little modifications to these scripts. Just uh, it, and initialize NCCL, set the device target to GPU, and then set auto parallel mode. Now, then we can run our job. So uh, these are screenshots of the output result. As you can see, we have three parts, uh, MPI master zero and two MPI workers, worker zero and worker one. So the logs from the uh, MPI masters is, the output is um, six by three by four dimensional array, which is uh, two times the original output because we have two workers. So by, no by now we successfully run the uh, MPI run the MySport GPU on Volcano in a Kubernetes cluster. All right, uh, that's all. I hope you enjoy and thank you.